Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to use the Studio Surface command. So, let's start. Here is the command of Studio Surface. As per the definition, it is going to create a surface using any number of section and guide strings. So, the basic difference between the through curve mesh and the Studio Surface is that through curve mesh needs four curves. Four curves. That means two for the primary and two for the cross curves. Whereas the studio surface is going to generate the surface by using any number of sections and guide strings. Whether there could be two numbers of sections in the primary and uh, one or uh, no guide in the guide strings. So let's understand this through the example. So this is the advanced understanding of the studio surface on this model. So we are going to start with the basic one. For the basic one, I have already created a feature here, which is this one, and uh, I'm going to hide the datum planes. For hiding the datum planes, I'm using the short key as Control plus W, which opens the dialog box for the show and hide. And here we will go with the show. Like here, you can see there are eyes open, and these are eyes closed, which means hide. So currently, I'm going to hide all the datum planes. So I'm just going to click on this close die. So this will hide the datum plane. Now, we are going to start with the studio surface. Just click on studio surface and the short key for studio surface as mentioned by the software is N. So you can press N on the keyboard and it will open the studio surface dialog options. Now the very first option regarding the studio surface is uh, primary curves. That means what are your primary curves and then you have the guide curves. So if you want to know about the primary and cross curves, uh, you can watch my video on through curve mesh. I'll attach the link so that you can directly jump on to that video and uh, continue this session from here. However, if you are familiar with that knowledge, you can continue with this video now. Let's start with the primary curves. Here we have the primary curves. For the primary curves, I'm going to select this one and MB3, which is going to add a new section in the primary curves. So this is going to be the second primary curve. Now you can see the surface has been generated using only the two curves. By the way, at least two curves are needed in the studio surface. You cannot generate a surface uh, using the single curve, which is possible in the extrude command. By using the extrude command, you can still generate the surface by using the only one curve, but there you have to give the value. And in the entire box of the studio surface, you can see that we cannot give any kind of value. So here the logic is that it is going to use some references of the curves for the generation of the surface. Now, if I just close this and just go to the through curve mesh and going to select this and then this. Now you can see this has not generated the surface. Why so? Because it's still asking for the cross curve. And for the cross curve, I need the full curves. So I'm just going to draw one more curve quickly. Here. Up to here. This is just for the understanding that how studio surface is going to be different from the through curve mesh. Otherwise, user may have some confusion that if we have the command of through curve mesh, then why do we still need the command of studio surface? So this is the reason why we need the studio surface. Still, we have through curve mesh in the software. But let's start understanding the through curve mesh, how it is going to work. So here you can see I'm selecting the guide curves along the primary curves and uh, it has generated the surface. Suppose, suppose if I just deselect this one, now you can see it has not generated the surface. So this is the basic difference between the through curve mesh and studio surface and uh, I have elaborated the difference with the demonstration as well. The demonstration is simple that through curve mesh require the four curves to it primary and to in cross curves. Whereas the studio surface can generate the surface using any number of full curves. Basically, it needs two curves, whether it is going to be one in primary and one in cross curve or two in primary. Okay. So I'm just going to again generate the surface using the studio surface. 
but this time I'm just going to put this in the primary curves. Press MB3. It will add a new section to the primary curve. Now again press MB3. It will jump to the next option which is guide or cross curve. So this is how some little improvements like I have press MB3 twice to jump to the cross curve instead of going to the cross curve like this. So this is the basic and the advanced is MB3. So this is how you can speed up your level of uh, CAD. Now I'm just going to select this one. Now you can see the difference clearly that it is following the guide and uh, this is the first primary curve. So this is how the command is going to work. Now here let's have a deep dive into the command. So for that I'm just going to add a new section to the primary. So I'm just going to click on this curve. So first let me just uh, deselect this because we are still in the guide one. So just click on the primary curves and here I'm just going to select this one. Now here is the surface generated by us using the this curve as the guide curve and these two as the primary curve. Now why I have selected this let me just show you for that I'm just going to the arc length and this is going to be the pie points. Now you can see there are three points which are this one one two three and here we have three points so I'm just going to change the point location just to have the transitions like how it is going to work basically this is not the third point okay so here we have some point like this and this we can also add the points as for our requirement by just having the click like this. So I have added a point here and we can just have the adjustment as per our choice. Now I'm just going to have the transition control. Basically transition means if there are some changes like uh, this is the first primary, this is the second primary. So if the shape is changing, that that is meant by transition that means change so change in the primary curve one to the change in primary curve two and they are merging together so that merge is said to be as transition and here we have the option of cubic and the linear and blend basically two options so this is the cubic that means it is going to follow some sharp curve next we have linear and blend and uh, in the case of linear and blend you can see that it is going to merge the transition linearly along with blending that transition and you can still have the changes with the by points and i am arranging the points here like this so this is how you can generate the surface if that is going to look aesthetic to you so this is how we can generate this surface using this studio surface. So this is the basic, like you can see, I have generated a surface using some sharp edges at this location. This is giving some sharpness to us. And we can have the analysis for this, like we have reflection command and check for the reflections. And you can see that a smooth surface has been generated by us using the studio surface by checking the reflection. If the surface is not going to be smooth then it will show some kind of dig or some kind of impression there so this is how we can generate the surface now the next option regarding the studio surface is all about the tendency that how you, we are going to apply the tendency for that i'm just going to hide this feature group now let's go to the next feature group which is this one and i'm just going to hide the layer 91 because in that layer I have put some unwanted curves. Now let's understand that why we need the guide. So I'm just going to use the studio surface. Then here this is going to be the first primary. And you can see that this is the complete curve. This is complete curve like this. So this is a single curve. But when I am just going to select this one. So it will select the portion up to where it is getting intercepted. 
So to use this option, you have to just click on stop at intersection using the filter as single curve. So if I just deactivate this and select this one, so it will select the entire curve. You can see it is selecting the entire curve. But if you want to select the portion between the intersections, then you have to activate the stop at intersection. So I'm just going to activate the stop at intersection. Then we have to select the first primary curve. So this is going to be the first primary curve. And I'm just going to select the second primary curve. This is the second primary curve. Now, the question may arise that we have generated the surface using the two primary curve. Then what is the need of the guide? Suppose if I just uh, zoom in here now, and you can see that we have a gap here. So basically, this surface is not following this guide curve. So for that, we have to define the guide curve. So be clear with this, because it has followed the profile at this position. Why so? Because this is a linear curve. That's the reason it is following it, because Studio Surface generates the surface in such a way that is going to follow the linear path. Okay, so be clear with these things. However, you can still apply this curve as guide, but it is all up to you. If the needs are getting satisfied by not using the guide, so still you can continue with that. However, you can see here, this is getting deviated. So I'm just going to select this curve. So go to this and select this. Now click on apply. Now you can see the deviation has been terminated by us by using that curve into the guide. So this is how we can generate the surface using the guide and why the guide is crucial for the generation of the surface. Let me just delete this. Now we will understand about the continuity. There are basically certain types of continuity. The very first one is G0, which means the, that it is going to form the linear contact with the surface. G0 means position. Basically, this is going to be the position. Whereas G1 is regarding the tangent. That means if you are giving some constraint with regard to some surface, then it will be tangent to that surface. And then we have the curvature that is more smooth to the surface we are going to bound that okay now let's understand about these differences the very first one is the primary curve so this is going to be the entirely the primary curve so i'm just going to deactivate the option of stop at intersection so i'm just going to select this then this now you can see the surface has been generated like this still i'm just going to put the guide curves so this is the first guide curve. Now I'm just going to select the second guide curve, which is this one. And this way we have generated the surface, but we are left with the tangency. So I'm just going to give the tangency to the last section, which is this one. Now you can see it is giving some error that unable to achieve the G0 continuity. So I'm just going to give the last guide as tangent now we have some of the input curves are not consistent with the continuity requirement so you have to be very sure that where we are lacking like you can see that it is giving some errors regarding the surface generation that it is uh, not able to give the continuity or to be linear somewhere so it is all up to you that how you are generating the surface so you do not have to worry about these things. Basically, the target must be fulfilled. If you really need the tendency, like uh, here I am unable to give the tendency. Why so? Because these curves are already the edges of another you know, surface. That's why I am unable to give the tendency. However, if you are going to generate a surface between only two surfaces or more than two, then you have to be very careful Using the bridge curves, you can have the transitions. Bridge curve basically is a command in the curve. So there you do not need the tangency curvature or the tangency continuity in the studio surface because bridge curves are going to create the tangent curves. 
with regard to the surface okay so we will cover that topic in the later videos however this is regarding the continuity that you can generate the continuities by having the neighboring surfaces and continuity is something you can use only when you have neighboring surfaces otherwise there is no need to use the continuity and you will not be able to use the continuity because for continuity there should be some surfaces in the graphics window however you will get the idea that how we can give the tendency by selecting the surfaces and one thing more regarding the tendency like this is the first section and if you get any confusion regarding what is my first section so just go to the primary because uh, these are related to the primary first section last section then we have the first guide and last guide so where it is mentioning the section that means primary so it is asking for the first section so i'm not aware whether which section is my first section because i have having two sections here so just click on section one and it will highlight the first section so this is the first section and I am able to give the tendency to these surfaces only. You are not going to click on this side. Okay. So if I just click on this side, it will throw at another. The tendency surfaces or the constraint surfaces should be the neighboring surfaces. Okay. So I'm just going to give it as G0. At last, we have the option of switch strings. Now, what is switch strings? Switch strings means the guides are going to be get converted to the primary and primary are going to convert it to the guides just click on this now you can see section one is this one earlier it was this section two is this one earlier it was this so this is just an option that uh, how the surface is going to matter while generating the surface using the guides and primary and if you switch the strings what differences are you getting so I would request you to practice on your own with uh, different number of curves. Basically, these are some simple curves. So you can practice on some advanced curves. I would prefer you to use the studio splines or spline curves for the checking of switch strings so that you could have the clear image regarding this. So that is all regarding the studio surface that how we can use the studio surface and why we need the studio surface and the Siemens NX and how it is going to get different from the through curve mesh. So we have covered the entire detail of the studio surface. So that is all regarding the studio surface. If you have learned something new from this video, please do hit a like, share this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thanks so much.